Welcome to Proteins and Enzymes Part 7, Quaternary Structure. Right? So, quaternary, well, do the four degree. Um, this one, um, this one, there's not as many questions that you can really get asked about, but you want to understand the fundamental concepts, right? That we have two or more polypeptide chains held together by non-covalent interactions to form a single 3D protein. Remembering that that means biological function, right? So polypeptides by themselves are not a protein until they can do a job inside our bodies. So the very common example is to look at, at hemoglobin. Because there are, um, there's four polypeptide subunits um, as the alpha and beta chains. And then we have the heme group that actually binds to the oxygen, and those are there. And the heme group, if we wanted to look at, you know, it often gets symbolized here. There's the heme with the iron. But if we wanted to get into the nitty-gritty detail of what it looks like chemically, here is the structure. So one of the main points in, in this tutorial is to remember the difference between a polypeptide and a protein. Right? So a polypeptide is a polymer of amino acids. And a protein is also a polymer of amino acids. So that part, whoops, excuse me. So polypeptides are, and proteins are both polymers of amino acids, but what makes it a protein is it has that biological function. And this, um, so quaternary structure is a great place to talk about that because if we had any one of these four polypeptides by itself, it's not going to transport oxygen molecules. So we need the combination. Um, another topic that comes up as we look at quaternary structure is we can um, explore the concept of denaturation. So, um, Denaturation um, has to do with the fact that an, an active, right, biologically active protein must be in its native conformation, right? So that's the um, conformations would really be secondary, tertiary, and quaternary, right? That would be the conformation. The primary structure, right, that's covalent bonds. So those are not easily broken. However, right, the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure, that's all about non-covalent interactions. So these can be disturbed by heat and agitation, changes in pH, detergents, salts, solvents. There's all kinds of things. And what these do is they cause the protein to denature. So what does that mean? That means that the um, protein becomes unfolded. Basically, denaturing is a loss of secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. And it could be or. And or quaternary structure. Okay. So anytime there's been a change in the environment of a protein that causes a loss of the quaternary, tertiary, or secondary structure, we say the protein has been denatured. Um, so it depends on um, what the circumstances were. Some proteins can spontaneously refold, but in many cases, um, it's irreversible, and then at that point, it, the protein is deactivated, and the body needs to just um, chop it up to use for something fresh. All righty. So if we think about it here, so here is the active protein. Notice that it has its, um, it has its secondary, tertiary, and possibly quaternary structure. And then here we see it as denatured. So we've lost, we've lost those interactions. Um, all righty. 
So now let's have a few wrap-up questions to see how well you're understanding um, protein structure and the idea of denaturation. Okay, so about half of the 223 amino acids um, that we find in the digestive enzyme trypsin are hydrophobic, right? Where would we find those, right? So if they're hydrophobic, we are going to find them on the inside of the globule, right? In the center of the globular protein. Remembering that um, globular proteins are often enzymes. Okay. Now, if we look at the, um, the polar part, the polar amino acid residues of um, trypsin, where would they be, right? Those are going to be around the outside, right? The outside surface of trypsin. Okay. And then suppose that a polypeptide containing 150 amino acid residues is synthesized in the laboratory. Why is it not correct to call it a protein? Right? Because it does not have biological function. Okay. And then let's um, keep this distinguished. What parts of the protein structure is or are affected by hydrolysis? Right, so in hydrolysis, that's about, right, that's breaking covalent um, bonds, right, with water. So when we're talking about hydrolysis of proteins, we're talking about the primary amino acid structure, all right, being broken. So typically, the hydrolysis conditions will also cause problems with the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. But the main thing about hydrolysis is that it has the power to get all the way to the primary structure, which is the amino acid sequence. All righty. So this concludes our tutorial on the quaternary structure of proteins. Um, please take a few minutes now to work a, some homework problems to reinforce your understanding.